In this video, I'm going to share my top 10 embroidery stitches. Hello and welcome. I'm Rebecca at Sew Pomona, where I design embroidery patterns for the home sewist and crafter. Before we get started, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an upload. So let's get started with my top 10 beginner embroidery stitches. First up, a classic, the cross stitch. It's also called Berlin stitch or sampler stitch. This is probably the stitch you're most familiar with. It's used to work basic embroideries and cross stitch samplers. It's worked first in one direction in diagonal lines and then back the other direction to make small X's. Bring your stitch up and across an equal amount and then come up directly underneath that stitch and go across in a diagonal line. Continue until you've finished your row. When you've reached the end, go directly under that line and continue the other direction across the row. Next, we have running stitch. This is a simple outline stitch that leaves a gap in between your stitches. Bring your floss up from behind and then enter again to the right. Leave a gap and continue, keeping your stitches as even as possible. Third, we have laced running, also known as threaded backstitch. This is a decorative outline stitch. You work a line of running stitches and then bring a second row of thread in and out, keeping your loops even. We're going to complete running stitch as we did before, keeping our stitches even with a gap in between each one. When you've completed your row, you're going to bring either the same color thread or a contrast thread and weave it in and out of your loops. You can go just one direction or as you finish, come back around and fill in the other direction. This gives you a lacy effect. Number four, back stitch. This is a basic outline stitch that's worked from right to left. Like the name implies, it works from the back into the last stitch. Start one to the right, coming up from the back and stitching to the left. You'll then come up from the back over one and to the left again, continuing in a line. Number five, couching or laid thread. This consists of a single or double thread laid flat. A contrast thread is stitched from above to below, securing the thread. First, bring a thread up from the back. You can use a double or single layer and go as far as you'd like your line to end. Tie it off in the back. Now we're going to use a contrast thread you can use one or two layers of floss. 
I'm using two here in a contrast color, go underneath and over securing your thread. Your needle will go in and out of the same hole. Continue until your thread is secured. Number six is one of my favorite stitches, French knots. This is a twisted knotted stitch. The thread is wrapped around the needle once or twice before reinserting it back into the fabric to form a knot. Keep your tension even and hold your needle taut for good results. You can experiment with the density of the stitch or the number of times you wrap the needle for different size knots. Pull your thread up, lay it against your needle and wrap it once or twice and then reinsert the needle into the same hole, pulling taut. We'll repeat, pull your thread up, wrap it around your needle. Number seven, re seed stitch. A simple decorative stitch. It's just two small straight stitches stitched side by side or placed randomly. It's often used to fill areas in a decorative way. Come from behind and do a diagonal to the right. Now bring your second stitch up close to the last one and reinsert the needle on the same diagonal. You can do these stitches to the right, to the left, or straight up and down. Number eight, stem stitch or cruel. This is an outline stitch often used for curved lines. It creates a rope-like effect. It's worked from left to right and each stitch layers next to each other from the center of the previous stitch. You can also lace the stitches when you're finished to add a bit more definition. The first row I completed already was with double thread. Now I'm going to show you the stitch with a single thread. Come up from behind in the center of your last stitch and stitch on a slight diagonal to the right. When you come back from behind, you're gonna enter at the middle of your previous stitch and continue on in one direction. When you reach the end, you can leave it or lace through two stitches at a time. This will give it a more rope-like effect. Number nine is satin stitch, often called damask. It's a simple solid filling stitch worked in rows. This is great for working large areas. First, I'm going to show you the basic satin stitch. We go from below to above, keeping our stitches equidistant and close together. This is great for filling an area with a basic stitch.
Next, we're going to do the same stitch, but we're going to start with the back stitch border. This helps to keep your stitches in line and to raise the level a little bit. You could use a back stitch, a split stitch, or a straight stitch. So I'm going to work a line below and then above. And then I'm going to use the satin fill the same way, stitching from below to above to fill the whole area. Now that our two guidelines are set, I'll start stitching. You'll see that these stitches are slightly more raised than the ones to the left. And last, our number 10 stitch, long and short. This is simply alternating rows of different size stitches. It can be worked in multiple rows for shading. It gives a gradient like effect to your filled areas, which can be quite lovely. I suggest using this to fill really large areas or for shading. You're going to start like for satin stitch, making a line. Then we're going to come up in the middle and stitch to the top. And now we'll alternate our stitches, long and then short. Long stitch, followed by a short stitch until you complete the entire row.
once you've completed your first row, you're going to come back underneath to do a long stitch to meet up with the short stitches and then continue all the way down the line with your long stitches. After you've completed all of these long stitches, you would go back in and do your next row of short stitches. We've now completed our row of long stitches, and now we go back in with short stitches that fill in all the gaps that are left. As you can see, this creates a lovely striated effect that adds shading to your design. And there you have it, our top 10 beginner embroidery stitches. I hope this little tutorial helps you get stitching. If you liked this video, please make sure and subscribe. Just click on the subscribe button below. Next week, I'll be back with my favorite embroidery stitches, so stay tuned. If you'd like more sewing and embroidery content, head over to my blog, SewPomona.com, and sign up for my newsletter. And if you'd like to check out my embroidery designs, please head over to my Etsy shop, Sew Pomona. Links are in the description. And if there's a stitch you'd like to learn, please let me know in the comments. I have a few more stitch tutorials coming up, and I'd love to help you get stitching. Thanks so much for watching. Happy sewing!